You've probably heard of Dave Grohl as the lead singer of Foo Fighters, the drummer from Nirvana, or just the nicest guy in rock. No matter how you see him, Dave Grohl stands as one of the most influential drummers in the history of rock. His impact is so significant that he's been honored with not just one, but two inductions into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Dave started rocking out with Nirvana a long time ago when grunge music was taking over. His drumming on songs like Come As You Are and Smells Like Teen Spirit was like the soundtrack of the 90s for a lot of teenagers. But even after Nirvana, Dave didn't stop. He became the leader of Foo Fighters and showed everyone that he's not just a drummer, he can play guitar and sing like a rock star too. Let's take a closer look at how a teenager hitting pillows with drumsticks in his bedroom became a rock and roll icon. David Eric Grohl was born on January 14, 1969 in Warren, Ohio. Growing up, Grohl moved from Ohio to Virginia at a young age, where he lived with his mother and older sister after his parents' divorce. His passion for music developed early on, starting with guitar before transitioning to drums. By age 10, Grohl was already jamming in bands, showcasing his musical talent and love for punk rock. During high school years, Grohl was deeply involved in the punk scene, playing in bands and embracing the rebellious spirit of the genre. He dropped out in his junior year and joined Scream, a hardcore band from Washington, D.C. Grohl's time with Scream polished his skills and laid the groundwork for his future success in the music industry. The key moment came when Grohl crossed paths with Nirvana during a tour. It was backstage at a Melvin's gig where he first met Kurt Cobain and Chris Novoselic in 1990. Though they didn't connect that night, Grohl's talent caught their attention when he auditioned for Nirvana later that year. His powerful drumming style and infectious energy instantly clicked with the band, leading to his inclusion as their new drummer. Living with Cobain during this period and dating Jennifer Finch from L7, Grohl experienced the insane rise of Nirvana. The band signing with Geffen Records and the release of their breakthrough album, Nevermind, took them to superstardom. Grohl's drumming on tracks like Smells Like Teen Spirit contributed to the album's massive success, blending punk, metal, and pop influences into a revolutionary sound. But Smells Like Teen Spirit wasn't just a hit song. It was a rebellious anthem that shook up the music scene. Its music video, with its edgy high school theme, became a staple on MTV, introducing millions to Nirvana's raw, emotional sound. Their album, Nevermind, skyrocketed, selling over 4 million copies in less than a year. This success pushed Nirvana into the forefront of the grunge movement, a genre that spoke to the alienation and frustration felt by many. However, fame came with its own set of challenges. Kurt Cobain, the band's frontman, struggled with the pressures of stardom and battled with drug abuse. His relationship with Courtney Love added strain to the band dynamics. Meanwhile, Dave Grohl, the band's drummer, started a solo project called Pocket Watch, showcasing his versatility and creativity beyond Nirvana's confines. Despite the internal struggles, Nirvana released their final studio album together, In Utero, praised for its brilliance and raw emotion. Grohl's contributions, like the music for Scentless Apprentice, added depth to the album. Yet, Cobain's mental health became worse, leading to a tragic turn of events. He attempted suicide during a European tour break, and ultimately took his own life on April 6, 1994. After Cobain's death, the remaining members of Nirvana won a Grammy Award for their live recording on MTV called Unplugged in New York. After the Nirvana era, Dave Grohl didn't pause for a breath. He jumped into creating the Foo Fighters. In 1995, their first album came out, and it was basically all Dave. He played almost everything, sang, and used songs he'd already written during his Nirvana days. People loved it. Tracks like This Is A Call and I'll Stick Around became instant hits. When it was time to perform live, Dave brought in some buddies. Nate Mendel on bass, William Goldsmith on drums, and Pat Smear on guitar. They clicked so well that their second album, The Color and the Shape, dropped in 1997 and blew everyone away. Songs like Monkey Wrench, Everlong, and My Hero were everywhere, solidifying the Foo Fighters' place in rock. Their winning streak continued with There's Nothing Left to Lose in 99, bagging their first Grammy for Best Rock Album. 
Learn to Fly from that album became a massive hit, and its music video even won them another Grammy. As time rolled on, the band saw some lineup changes. Chris Shiflett joined as lead guitarist, and even Franz Stahl from Scream stepped in for a bit. The hits kept coming, like All My Life from One by One, earning them more Grammys. The Foo Fighters had firmly stamped their mark as rock gods, always pushing boundaries and winning over fans with their killer tunes. In 2007, the Foo Fighters dropped their album Echoes, Silence, Patience, and Grace, showcasing their versatility with everything from power pop to acoustic ballads. Critics called it a masterpiece, praising its evolution and depth. The band hit the road for an extensive tour, bringing their electrifying energy to fans worldwide. While Dave Grohl dabbled in collaborations with bands like Queens of the Stone Age and Tenacious D, his heart always gravitated back to the Foo Fighters. Their subsequent albums, Wasting Light 2011, Sonic Highways 2014, Concrete and Gold 2017, and Medicine at Midnight 2021 continued their streak of excellence. Run from Concrete and Gold even snagged the Grammy for Best Rock Song in 2018. However, tragedy occurred in 2022 when the band lost their legendary drummer Taylor Hawkins during a tour in South America. The music world mourned, and the Foo Fighters honored Hawkins with two tribute concerts in London and Los Angeles. At Wembley Stadium, during an emotional performance of times like these, Dave Grohl's tears spoke volumes about their bond and loss. The following album, aptly titled But Here We Are, served as a means of release, reflecting the band's journey through grief and resilience. Critics praised its honesty and raw emotion, highlighting the Foo Fighters' ability to channel their experiences into powerful music. Now, let's talk a bit more about Dave Grohl's drumming style and musical influences. Dave Grohl's drumming is like the heartbeat of rock music, Strong, steady, and full of life. What sets him apart is his ability to make every beat count, whether he's smashing the drums in a punk frenzy or laying down smooth rhythms in a melodic tune. What's really cool about Dave's style is how he blends different sounds seamlessly. He's not bland. He can switch gears from hard-hitting punk beats to groovy rock rhythms without missing a beat. This versatility adds depth and richness to his drumming, making each song unique and captivating. His time with Nirvana showed us just how impactful his drumming could be. Songs like Smells Like Teen Spirit weren't just about the lyrics or the guitar. Dave's drumming was like a thunderstorm, driving the energy and intensity of the music to new heights. It was raw, powerful, and left a lasting impression on everyone who heard it. Even with the Foo Fighters, Dave's drumming continued to shine. Tracks like Everlong and My Hero are perfect examples of his ability to craft memorable beats that stick with you long after the song ends. It's not just about keeping time, it's about creating an experience, and Dave does that effortlessly. What makes Dave Grohl's drumming so special is his passion and authenticity. You can feel the energy and emotion in every beat, and that's what resonates with fans. Whether he's rocking out on stage or laying down tracks in the studio, Dave brings a unique flair and a whole lot of heart to his music, making him a true rock icon. So, what do you think is the special reason behind Dave Grohl's drumming being so iconic and influential? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to show your support by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more fascinating stories from the world of music. And hit that notification bell so that you never miss out on our latest updates. Thanks for watching.